How many of you guys got your clothes out of a dresser today? Did you? And how many guys ate, how you guys ate breakfast? So the kids who come here, they don't have those things. They don't have beds. I started the wider circle because there are so many more of us who are not in poverty than there are people who are mired in it. We would have, you know, hundreds of people here every day. Um, we have about 1,100 families on our waiting list. We want people to find this as a place they can do community service in an ongoing way. Our goal is to help end poverty in the region. It w requires no no job skills whatsoever to do what I do. So, um, can you guys, let's put you in I want to explain to them something about why we're doing what we're doing and then connect that to what they're doing that day. Need. So we figure if the nine million people decide that they all want to help those half a million who don't have things, then we have a pretty good chance of helping them. This is a place that's open seven days a week. And so we really say no to nobody. Whether they need help or they want to help, we say no to nobody. Uh, I basically uh, come out on Saturdays and either uh, help here in the warehouse downloading furniture donated by uh, donors across the D.C., Maryland, Virginia area, and sometimes I drive the truck as well uh, to, to pick up these donations. I share a lot of, of our clients' same experiences. It starts um, once they come through the door, greeting them, you know, making sure that they're comfortable, making sure they have adequate parking, and it actually starts in the parking lot when I first introduced myself to them. I come in most Saturdays and help the families that are coming in to pick up their items, um, meet with them, get the information that we need, and then help them pick everything out and make sure they get loaded up onto the cars or trucks and, and that we're able to help them. Uh, lift, move stuff, fix stuff, or whatever they need me to do. And both of those beds. And then can one more we are able to easily for the donor go and pick up what they need to donate, what they want to remove from their home at no cost to them. We bring them to the showroom, uh, add them to our current inventory and the clients are arranged by appointment to come and pick out uh, whatever pieces of furniture that suit their needs. Came with my sister, um, she needed some furniture. Uh, she had a, a problem in her apartment. We got a couch, a desk, um, some food items. Uh, she's handicapped, she's elderly, and this uh, really helped her out in a tight situation. It's like a wider circle type of cycle where your people are giving back and we're giving it to them, the furniture, so it just kind of goes around. I think we're able to basically transfer goods and, and, and items that one person might not need to a person that might need it. When you're able to provide food for your family, shelter, have the furnishings and things, the beds to sleep on, you know, everything else becomes less and less of a challenge. Everyone here is extremely cordial, very, very friendly, very, very friendly. They make you feel at home. They don't make you feel as if you're in need, you know, as if you're needy. It still struck me as, as unacceptable that, you know, here's an individual, you know, working two jobs and is still not able to, um, to, to fund or, or to, to pay the bills in order to rent a place or to own a home. Uh, it's, a very, it's a fulfilling experience because I've, I've looked for volunteer opportunities for myself, my own children, and students, and it's not easy to find a place that will just take you anytime you want to come and do anything you want to do and stay as many hours as you want to stay, and they're a very welcoming organization. Uh, it means a lot to me, I mean, because to see people take the stuff, like I bring it here, and then to see people go home and furnish their actual homes with it. It's like a good feeling to know that somebody is actually taking this stuff that I'm moving and working hard and then putting in their house and living. This is one of my favorite days of the week, if not my favorite day of the week. <laughs> Morally, I'm at my center when I'm here because I'm able to balance what I'm doing for me and for my family and for my goals and then what I can do to give back to society and to humanity people in general. Sometimes people fall, but with help, they can get up.
It's only by really engaging the community that we're ever going to be able to end poverty. But we make it a priority to have opportunities for people no matter how old they are. So if somebody's five years old and they want to come with their mom, we try to make it so that they can do something and leave at the end of the day saying, I help people. We're serving between 250 and 300 clients a month. It's a daunting task to always make sure that the warehouse is organized, that it's clean, that everything's in dignity condition. So we, everything here always comes down to how best are we going to serve our clients. And so if we think about it that way, we need those volunteers to make sure that we're serving our clients the way that they deserve. I know that we can change those lives. I know, for example, that if the Olympics were to come to town, we would create an Olympic village, we would make sure all the athletes had enough food, all the athletes had housing, and all the athletes had an opportunity to succeed. Well, that's all we need to do is put in that kind of Olympic effort, and we can make sure that the residents, the people who've lived their lives in our nation's capital region, have that same opportunity. And then we can do that anywhere else in the country. We just have to care that much.